A storm will roll in tonight. Stormy Daniels, the nation's most talked about adult film actress, will break her contractually obligated silence on TV's venerable 60 Minutes. Clearly, this is something that has gotten to the president. Beyond the salacious, one risk for the president is the potential for a campaign finance law violation. The president looks at this and I think he's looking at it like I am looking at it. This is politically motivated to hurt and embarrass him in some way. Hopefully he will listen to people who are, are wise and understand that this is not a, a fight that he wants to participate in. He can't win this fight. It isn't so much about the affair that took place more than a decade ago. It's the effort to cover it up that has gotten this president in trouble. It's actually an extraordinary cultural moment that a porn star is more credible than the President of the United States. In six months, uh, what will have more of an impact on Washington? The Stormy Daniels interview in 60 Minutes or the gun march? All right, so in just a matter of hours, we'll finally hear from Stormy Daniels and a televised interview. The porn star is expected to tell the story of her alleged affair with Donald Trump uh, more than a decade ago. It's a story the President and his lawyers have tried to stop. Chris, here's what I'll tell you. The threat was delivered in person. My client's going to describe it in detail on Sunday. The American people are going to hear from her. They're going to judge her credibility. It was very frightening to her. Was the threat part of the reason she signed? I think absolutely. When, uh, when the president's fixer uh, exerts pressure on you to sign a document, you don't ask a lot of questions. You do as you're told. All right, tonight's interview with 60 Minutes follows one given by former Playboy model Karen McDougal. On Thursday, she revealed details about her alleged affair with Trump in 2006 and 2007. Consensual. It Just was to be consensual, clear. yes. After we had been intimate, he, he tried to pay me, and I actually didn't know how to take that. I looked at him and I said, that's not me. I'm not that kind of girl. All right, so the White House and the president's attorney have denied both affairs. Let's discuss all of this and the implications of it for the president. Here with me now on set, Midwin Charles, an attorney and contributor at Essence Magazine, Tara Dowdell, a Democratic strategist and former Apprentice contestant, Matt Welsh, editor-at-large for Reason Magazine, Claire Atkinson, NBC News senior media editor. It's great to have all of you with us. There's so much to talk about. Uh, we'll try to get through it as much as possible. Midwin, let me begin with you a little bit and talk about this because the president, uh, and at least his team we know, have threatened Stormy Daniels. They've countersued her uh, in the amount of $20 million uh, for potentially breaking this non-disclosure agreement uh, in giving this interview to 60 Minutes. What are the legal implications for her if, in fact, there is this non-disclosure agreement in place and she does go ahead with the airing of this interview that CBS says they will release? Well, first, let me just say that um, we ought to stop and take a moment and recognize how crazy this is. Yeah, I think the that's fact a very, that, that is a very, the very fair point. The fact that, you know, the president of the United States is suing a porn star and a porn star is suing the president of the United States is a moment that I think we all need to stop and recognize how outrageous that is. Apart from that, to answer your question, I'm not particularly sure, and here's why. Mm. The non-disclosure agreement is a contract. A contract is entered into both parties. Usually they have a meeting of the minds for consideration. The problem here is that this non-disclosure agreement, A, was not signed by Donald Trump, yeah. and B, it's my understanding that it's made out to a fictitious person. So good luck enforcing a non-disclosure agreement with someone who doesn't exist. Yeah, we're gonna That's see one of the biggest problems that I see with this. We'll this see how the legal battle plays now, Tara, let me ask you, because I know as a former contestant uh, on The Apprentice, you've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Trump, so to speak, <laughs> at least in the boardroom. Uh, and, and I wanted to ask you about uh, Stormy Daniels and if the president is underestimating her. Take a listen to the soundbite from her lawyer, and then I'll get your reaction. Let me tell you this, Chris. That DVD contains evidence of this relationship, and let me tell you why I sent the tweet. I sent the tweet as a warning shot to Michael Cohen and any other uh, supporter of the president and to the president himself to the extent that they plan on disparaging my client, lying about what happened, or uh, spinning facts that have no basis in reality after this 60-minute interview, uh, let that tweet be a warning to them. All right, and so the tweet that he is referencing there is a tweet that he posted earlier in the week. It was a picture of a DVD or a CD. It looks like we have it there. And in it, the caption, if a picture is worth a thousand words, how many words is this worth? Uh, please deny it, Basta, meaning enough in Spanish. So let, let's see. Did the president underestimate Stormy Daniels and her lawyer? 
Absolutely. Stormy Daniels and her attorney have outmaneuvered, outplayed him every single step of the way. She is dominating the news cycle, which is something that Donald Trump is used to doing. Mm. He's used to being the master manipulator of the media, and she is dominating the news cycle on her own terms. He is now on the defensive. She and her attorney are on the offensive. And what's worse for them is forget the salacious details and all of that stuff because a lot of voters don't care about that. We know that. But what voters do care about is the nonstop unrepentant lying the cover-ups and the lawlessness. And so for Democrats, that's just basically just reinforcing the lawlessness, the cover-ups, the nonstop lying, and the chaos. And that is what concerns yeah, voters. Yeah, especially if we find out where that $130,000 uh, alleged hush money originated from within the Trump organization. Uh, Matt, let me ask you something about the uh, uh, Michael Avenatti. He tweeted out this morning, in what some are saying is an attempt to lower expectations from the interview after like all the hype that it's been getting this week, the tweet about the DV uh, he wrote, note, A, not all of our evidence will be mentioned, displayed tonight. That would be foolish. B, we are not sure what CBS will include, but we know a lot from the full interview will have to be cut because of time allowed. C, tonight is not the end. It is the beginning. So what do you make of this tweet? Well, they've delivered a lot of eyeballs into 60 Minutes, which doesn't actually need a lot of ratings, right. generally speaking, but uh, they've been very skillful at this. And this is interesting because a month ago, whenever this thing broke, this story was on the verge of, of not really going anywhere. There was so much other stuff. Yeah, how did stuff we get here? Happy, going back well, to that partly, question. <laughs> partly because uh, legal actions create news. This right. is the biggest problem, ultimately, I think, for President Trump on this, is that as soon as you have depositions he might have to give, because this, this predates his activity as president, and there's no protection for him, executive privilege on this stuff. So every single time there's a new motion or a new challenge, that just creates a reason for this to come up in, in conversation. That's uh, hurtful to him, as is the, the notion that he has demonstrated now that uh, he is uh, has a tendency to uh, authorize the payment of large sums of money at the last minute of people to make uncomfortable affairs go away. This, to me, is where this is going to, I think, probably end up in the Mueller investigation because it puts him, that means that he's he's basically opening himself up to charges or ability to be bribed. That, what, is, what is paying a bunch of money to yeah. someone so that they don't talk? What does that mean? What is that thing? So, unfortunately, for from his point of view, I think this is going to bleed over into the investigation that's the real problem for him. Claire, let me ask you about something that a lot of pundits have brought up with the president, in that he has this tendency when he sees something that is about to come particularly against him, he tries to distract with creating news somewhere else, a diversion tactic. We saw that Thursday with the firing of H.R. McMaster uh, and the appointment of uh, John Bolton as the new national security advisor. We're about three hours away from this. Uh, what are the pretty chances? Quiet, right? Yeah, so far pretty quiet. Pretty he quiet. hasn't done anything about it over uh, yeah. the weekend in terms of, uh, of tweeting, but uh, we're not out of the woods yet. There is no. a possibility that something can happen between now and then to try to di Absolutely. distract us. Absolutely. Uh, and we're talking about a president and his lawyer who don't take things lying down whatsoever. Mm. Um, and I just uh, was emailing with my sources at CBS just to see if they would shed any light on what's going to be revealed. They told me that the staff there have worked all weekend on the interview, that she comes across as incredibly credible, mm. strong, and delivers a very revealing interview. Um, and so I would ask, what, if I was at CBS, I'd be asking myself, what are the ramifications going to be of us airing this interview? We all know what happened to Dan Rather when yeah. he um, aired the, the, the uh, piece about George Bush. So, uh, you know, I just out of interest that there was a, a couple of weeks ago some links on Drudge about um, CBS male executives and perhaps some negative stories mm. dropping. And I wondered if that perhaps had something to do with scare tactics and trying to get uh, 60 Minutes to back off. It's interesting that Anderson Cooper is the uh, yeah, he did both reporter. Interviews with Karen and, Absolutely, and, and he's here. a CNN figure, and here we have him on CBS 60 Minutes. So it'll be interesting. And the president is a very media savvy guy. Absolutely. So, I, so to that point, Taylor, let me ask you: What are the chances that the president does not tweet about this? I mean, his advisors are probably saying to him, or his lawyers are probably saying to him, "Do not reply directly to it," but. We know that he has an impulse to probably want to reply to it. Right, and that's another issue for him. He has no impulse control, right? Yeah. When he feels that he's under attack, he feels that he needs to attack and respond twice as hard. And so I don't think he's going to be able to suppress that impulse, particularly given the fact that she is winning the news cycle. Right. He knows she's winning. And to, to the point that was made, she's coming across far more credible than he is on this. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. Claire Atkinson, thank you very much for joining us, guys. I'm going to ask you guys to stick around. We've got a lot more uh, to 
discuss. And tonight, don't miss Casey DC starting at 7 p.m.